copy as well if you'd like to to rewatch today's recording. So um, yeah. So get us started then. Um, obviously, we are find ourselves in unprecedented times. We find ourselves kind of challenged with everyday things, and we find ourselves challenged with kind of new things on a daily occurrence. And um, the university has kind of had to come up against different things, had to tackle different things, and namely students have had to tackle different things. So hopefully, like as I said, today's webinar will give you um, some some kind of an insight into this and an insight into to life during these times. So. A very quick overall kind of general look at the university. So um, in general, how do we teach at the University of Chichester? So we are very lucky as a university. We are one of the smaller universities um, in the country. We are lucky that we um, can um, teach in very small group sizes. We're lucky that we have um, kind of what I would class as probably sort of college school style class group size um, lectures. Um, they can go up to larger lecture sizes and I'll get the students to explain their, their lecture sizes in a little bit, but um, generally they're in smaller group sizes. We don't have any rooms on campus that go um, above about 150 students. Um, we don't have rooms that tear off to the gods like you see in American films. We are a much smaller university and it's much more about that small group experience. And as for that, we're lucky enough to be able to offer lots of stuff, um, particularly around discussion and debate, um, experiential learning, um, all those real kind of hands on experiences um, that um, students will value um, and also will get um, more personal time with the tutors and, and the professors and the, the lecturers that they that they are um, being taught by. All of our professors and readers, as you can see there, so they they all of our professors um, or, or lecturers, academics, and um, whatever you call them in in kind of your terminology, they um, all teach and they all research. So they will be active in industry, whether that is doing their own research, whether that's working within industry for certain um, subjects, and that will inform their work. So they link all of that research, they link all of that industry experience back into the student learning. So students are learning the most current and up-to-date skills for the industries that they are interested in. Um, due to the size of our groups, we're able to offer that one-to-one -one support. And as I said earlier, that hands on practical learning. So a lots of different courses will have very practical, very experiential based um, subject matter. Just in case those of you who've joined us, like I can see a couple of people have joined the meeting recently. We are recording this today, but if you do ask any questions at any point, we are blurring any names or anything. So please do uh, please do ask questions as, as we go through. So. Obviously, in this current world, we find ourselves presented with kind of issues around COVID. Um, what, what COVID safe measures have been put in place here at the University of Chichester? So you can see from this some of the different um, examples that we have here, um, particularly. So um, as we came out of the initial lockdown, um, back in um, June, July time where people were returning to our campuses, where people were returning to work from our campuses, we introduced things like one way systems around campus. We we, we have a number of, of, of older buildings, so um, you can imagine there are the challenges around the way that people move around campus, but we do have really successful one way systems around the campus um, and everyone is, is very respectful of those. We have lots and lots of different hand sanitizer stations. So as people go in and out of buildings, as people go in and out of restaurants, in and out of shops, we have hand sanitizer stations and everyone is reminded and encouraged to use those regularly. Um, within indoor enclosed spaces, um, students are asked. Um, I'm assuming they're going to be in the panel. Can I ask just ask someone to mute their microphone there? Oh, well done. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> I did wonder where that noise is coming from, but brilliant. Thank you. So yes, um, mask wearing in, in our indoor spaces and in our enclosed spaces, we encourage people to be wearing face coverings and masks. So um, another thing that we've put in place, we have protective screens in all different areas. We have them in our um, learning resource centre. We have them in front of our student um, reception. We have them in our restaurants, in our coffee shops. So they are there to protect customers and to protect staff both ways. Um, currently, although we do have some small group sizes and small class sizes, we have in some uh, subjects um, reduced those um, and introduced kind of a, a blended approach to a, a blended approach to to the learning and the teaching that takes place so that we are able to space students out in those areas. Um, 
and, and, and sit in appropriate positions. So our classroom layouts have changed. We've got dots on the floor. We've got chairs in specific places. Um, we have kind of moved around the, the layout of rooms to, to work it to the most effective use. Um, in any normal day and in any situation now or in the future or in the past, these are some of our lovely facilities that we have on campus and these are some of the lovely facilities that our students are still able to use no matter what the current situation is. They are able to access things like um, our theatre spaces, our tech park, our dance studios, our green screen, um, our climbing walls. These are all the resources that are still there for our students to be using at this current time. There may be slightly different restrictions. Yes, they may be wearing face coverings. Yes, the numbers may be reduced as to who is able to access them at the same time. But ultimately, these resources are still there for our students to to access for their for their learning and for for their courses. Moving on to kind of a bit about how you'll be assessed. I, I, I won't be able to go into exact specifics on every single course that we have because we have um, a, any number of combinations, any any number of, of mixes. Um, I'm sure as you're doing your research, you're realising that each university is very different in the way that they assess, in the way that they um, in the way that they grade students so that could be from any of these any of these different ways we have things like exams we have things like written essays we have presentations and that could be you presenting on your own that could be you presenting as part of a group and in some courses and some subjects as the students will talk about shortly there will be practical elements and those practical elements are still involved at the moment um, the only difference is there are kind of those extra covid secure measures to ensure students are safe um, the support that's on offer, so I mentioned some of this in previous webinars, there are lots of different methods of support for our students, there are lots of different things um, in place, we have any number of different things from this list, so academic skills, we have a chaplaincy, we have student health services, we have student money services, um, students are able to access a whole wealth of um, support whether that be about their course, whether that be about their, their health, um, their physical, their mental health, um, or whether that be things regarding things like money and, and getting support on budgeting. Students have access to all of these different support services. And again, even in the current climate that we're in, those services are all still there working with students, um, albeit with extra, extra COVID secure measures, they are still there to support students, particularly at this time. Something to note, um, we were recently uh, a winner of a, an EduRank award, so we we were we were given an award for the best campaign supporting student well-being, something that we were really really um, really proud to be part of and really proud to have. Um, our um, digital team and our and our psychology team worked hard on doing a campaign about um, people passing on small acts of kindness across the campus, people sharing different acts of kindness and also thinking about things they could do to, um, to, to make people stay and make people smile and things like that. So it was something small, but it impacted um, the, the mental health and the well-being of our students and our campus, not only students, but staff as well in, in quite a big way. Um, I'm going to say we'll move to questions at this point because I don't want to go into too much more um, kind of detail and steal the steal the thunder of our lovely um, lovely ambassadors who are here today so before we move into those questions I'm going to get them both to come on camera in a second and introduce themselves if I say um, Amelia if you can come on first and introduce yourself and your course uh, and where you're from and then once you finish we'll get Mike to as well okay hi um, so my name's Amelia. Um, I'm a first year student and I study English literature. Thanks, Amelia. Hi, so I'm Mike. I'm also a first year student. I'm studying physiotherapy. You might have picked up from the accent. I'm American, but I've actually been in the UK for the last four years. So I do actually have a bit of experience with the international realm as well for anybody that might need help and questions specifically about that. Thanks, guys. That's brilliant. Um, I will say this is the point where people can start to put in any questions in the chat box. We do have some um, some pre kind of pre pre prepared questions to get you guys thinking um, and um, hopefully that will get you thinking of some of the questions you want to know. But ultimately, I'm pretty sure people will have questions themselves. And um, if I get you guys, first of all, if I start with Mike this time around, if you could introduce yourself a little bit further and maybe tell us a little bit more about your background, what brought you around to, to the particular course you're studying? Yeah, so like I said, I'm Mike. I'm 
one of the mature students here. I'm actually 29 right. years old, so getting to physiotherapy was not necessarily the very first thing that came to mind. So I had a career for about 10 years actually in the military, in the US military, and the last three years of which took me out to Lincoln up further north. And then from there, looked down to Portsmouth. It was the area where my partner and I were gonna go and live. And so I started looking at universities around there and I noticed Chichester, you know, highly advertised as the sunniest place in England, <laughs> which believe it or not, is actually true, which isn't a very winning title when it's still dark half the year, but it still is really sunny. The summers are amazing down here. But getting into physiotherapy, uh, I've always wanted a hands-on kind of career away from computer screens, and I wanted to help people. And luckily, Chichester just opened up their very first course ever for physiotherapy this year. And being my first year going into a new career field and being the university's first year with this course, I just felt like it was a connection. I had to do it and no regrets coming into it. Thanks, Mike. That's brilliant. Amelia, did you want to share a little bit more about your background and how you've got to where you are today? Yeah, so um, I um, have just finished my A-level, so I didn't sit uh, any exams. So obviously got cancelled because of COVID. Um, yeah, I'm 18, but I basically, I knew I wanted to do English literature um, for quite a long time. It's always been my favourite subject. Um, all the way since like primary school and like when we were doing reading at home and things like that. Um, I absolutely love reading, I love books, so it was an easy fit for me. Um, I found Chichester because I do think of Chichester as a hidden gem, um, but quite it's quite a funny story. I basically just googled um, universities by the sea um, and I got a list and I went through them and I like ruled out the ones that don't do the course I wanted and then I looked more specifically um, because where I live I live in Northamptonshire which is actually the furthest point in the UK away from the ocean so I wanted a change um, but yeah that's pretty much how I ended up um, at Chichester I love the uni I love that it's small um, and one of my hobbies is actually musical theatre so I love that they um, specialise in that massively so it's like I'm constantly surrounded by people that have the same interests as me um, yeah and I love the course it's a really modern approach on English literature so I was 100% drew here like I knew that this was where I wanted to go Excellent. Thanks, Amelia. Um, so I'm going to delve straight into probably some of the questions that people are probably more um, more interested in uh, and probably more relevant at the moment. But um, what, what, why particularly this year did you decide that, um, that that university was for you? I'll go with Amelia first. Um, well, I knew that I didn't want to do a gap year. Um, and for me, university was never about um massive parties and like going out and everything like that like obviously i like to socialize but it was never the key thing um that wasn't the reason that i was coming i was coming for um firstly to get further education on a subject that i love and secondly to gain some independence and life experience um and those are two things that i definitely have like i'm in my flat at the moment like i live by myself obviously with my flatmates but no parents um and I'm doing my own shopping and I'm, you know, I can walk into town and things like that, that I couldn't do where I was from. Um, so for me, all the elements that I was looking for are still here in my day to day life. And I don't feel like it's that much different. Um, and if I'd chosen to take a gap year or deferred, I feel like I would just be sitting at home, raring to go. And it's just not what I wanted to do. Thanks, Amelia. So same thing to you, Mike. Um, why, why, what, particularly in this year, did it kind of, did you think about it because of COVID? Was it because you were already on that path? What, what made you think about it for this particular year? So it just lined up perfectly with my end of my previous career because we do contracts in the US military. So it ended after a six and a four year contract. So it was 10 years and it was time to move on. The reason I chose to not defer and not find something else to do for the year prior was because I actually was fortunate enough to get to the in-person interviews with the physiotherapy team. And they had talked a lot of us through some of the procedures they were going to take to make sure that courses could go ahead as normally as possible and explain what some of those differences might look like. I personally hate online courses more than anything. I cannot focus in my own house by myself. I don't have that, that discipline that I really ought to have at this age. And I need the in-person classes. So when I talked to them and they had, had explained how you know, there is still is going to be those in-person classes and those distance ones are actually going to be made to be interesting. It worked out quite well. So I didn't feel as though I needed to 
not join this year because of COVID. And so everything else just lined up and I went from there. Thanks, Mike. That's great. Um, was there, for both of you probably, I suppose, was, was Chichester always your kind of ultimate choice or, or did um, things change towards your thoughts? Trying to go first, Mike. Sure, yeah. So actually, very similar to Amelia, I really wanted to be along the seaside. I have I grew up in San Francisco, which of course is right along the bay and it has water everywhere. And I really wanted to get back to that seaside kind of feeling. And so moving down to Portsmouth, where I did because my partner's work, I started looking around universities here. And while I looked at University of Portsmouth and Southampton and a couple of the other recent or rather local universities, Chichester did just stand out because honestly, the small university experience, the the intimacy that you get from the classes, you won't be getting if you're in a you know a course that has five, six first year classes instead of just the one that you kind of get here at Chichester. So I'd say honestly, Chichester was my first choice, and I'm really glad that I got it. So. Thank you. Cheers, Mike. And uh, same for you, Amelia. Yeah, um, a similar situation for me, really. I, I think I wasn't 100% sure at first and I applied for um, quite a few different unis around the UK and I looked at quite a few different unis before I put my application in as well. And I remember specifically going to Nottingham, um, which is a huge university, and I knew instantly I don't belong here. Um, I sat in a welcome meeting in a like one of those lecture halls like you said about you, like what you see in American movies um it was like stairs and stairs and stairs and it just went up and up and you could barely even see um the lecturer you know so and I just knew that that wasn't what I wanted so when I came here to Chichester um I was like 100% this is the like not to say vibe but this is the vibe that I want and um, this is the energy and the environment that I can see myself studying in and being comfortable in and especially as someone that has anxiety and mental health problems the close knit and like your lecturers knowing you by name and recognizing you was really important to me so um I knew as soon as I came here I had a one-on-one -on -one private tour and I knew that this is where I wanted to come Thanks, Amelia. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you for being so honest. Um, got a couple of questions come in, so I'll 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 pitch them out, and if they're ones I need to answer, I'll answer them as well. So, um, someone's asking here, can I can can I please ask how many people are in an average class? So, Amelia, do you want to go from a kind of humanities kind of point of view? How many are roughly in your classes? Yes. Yeah, so, um, on my course, um, just doing English literature, I think there's about twelve of us on the course we also have um people that do join english literature and creative writing though those courses join there'd probably be about literally about 20 people altogether that mix classes but in a lecture at any one time i'd say maximum 15 people excellent thank you and same to you mike so for a specific physiotherapy course we've got i think it's 28 people in total but the way that they had split it up as they did exactly that they split in half so we have two groups of 14 and then depending on each class we will either have the full 14 in as you mentioned before about with the classroom layout quite spaced out too or we'll even have it down to seven people and there'll be four iterations of whatever that class is brilliant thank you excellent um i've got some other ones coming in here so is there a teaching plan device for programs starting in september 2021 um so yes people um i mean I can only comment on what I know, but um, there are plans already looking forward. Um, as we don't know the current state of plan, we don't know what the government restrictions will be. We obviously can't say whether that will be more hands on or online, but please do keep checking our website for the latest updates. We will always strive to at least do a blend of kind of learning. So there will be that face to face and that hands on learning. We will always strive to do that as far as possible whilst keeping students safe. So, yeah, um, could it be possible that these restrictions could be removed by next academic year. Again, um, I'd love to say I knew the answer to that. I'd love to say I could give you a definitive. But again, um, as soon as we are able to safely remove different restrictions and we are able to return to to a without wanting kind of just a different word, a normal pattern of teaching um, that that will be what we will will strive to get towards. Um, so what have we got? How are more practical based courses being done due to COVID like dance? OK, so I'm going to go to Mike for this one, because although it's not a performance course, yours is obviously a, a, a hands on course, I would imagine, with some aspects of it. Um, how are the kind of hands on parts of your course 
managed? So I'll say just that they are still hands on. They are still in person. So the way that our specific course is handling it is we are actually following the NHS specific health provider guidelines. Same for the CSP, the Charge Society of Physiotherapists. We are taking their guidelines that physiotherapists and healthcare providers have to adhere to and adhering to them as students. So some of the things that we're doing, we're wearing our masks indoors, we're wearing gloves, we have aprons on disposable, be it what it is, and it actually manages to keep us all pretty safe, even if we're in small little groups. And then we're also limiting our own little bubbles. So for the actual hands-on portion of our classes, only two or three people will ever work with each other. It won't be all 14 people working together at the same time. We're greatly limiting those bubbles to try and keep everyone as safe as possible. And I imagine the dance courses are going to be pretty similar to that. If there are any kind of practical group elements to it, it will be broken up into much smaller groups and then adhering to distance or any other kind of health measures that you need. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Um, I think something that I can say from experience and from moving around the campus when I've been back on back on campus and in the office is courses like dance. You'll find students and teachers are dancing with visors on. Um, you'll find some are dancing with masks on. I know the other day I was talking to um, an, a, a, an, an MA course lecturer, so our master's dance course lecturer, and she'd taken her students outside to dance and taken them to one of the local forests so they could remove their um, remove their masks and things. So our teachers and our lecturers are being very creative but equally when they're in spaces like um like labs like uh, dance halls like nice. the theater then you find that there are um you'll find that there are uh, markings on the floor there are kind of boxes created out of tape so that people know they have space to perform and they have state space to um space to, to to act and those sorts of things can i just remind people if they're joining just to make sure that their microphones and their cameras are off just so uh just so that that doesn't um, pr provide any feedback. I just need to apologise. I had Bailey with a question uh, above this one, which was just wondering if Chichester's acceptance rate has been altered or lowered since COVID measures in relation to international as well as home status students. Um, I, 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 off the top of my head, I would say no, our acceptance rate hasn't altered or lowered since COVID measures. Um, we have recruited um, we recruited students in a way that we expected to. Um, and I think, again, probably from some of the examples that our students here have talked about, that's probably from the size of our, our institution. And also the fact that we can teach teach in those smaller groups and we can teach in those um, those smaller, more experiential kind of bubbles. Uh, moving on down, so I've got a question here from Molly. Do you have a guaranteed percentage of learning face to face compared to online? Um, I'll be honest with you there, Molly. This is something again that changes um, from from course to course. I will ask um, these guys to maybe give their experience as well, but um, it does vary from course to course. But we can get these guys examples from their from the humanities and from the physiotherapy. Amelia, do you do you want to talk about the kind of blend that you have of face to face compared to online at the moment? Yeah, so um, the way it's working for us at the moment is we have um, we do four modules um, in semester one. Um, so each week we have a, one lecture for each module and one seminar for each module. So the lectures are pre-recorded and put onto the Moodle page for us to complete at any time throughout the week before the seminar. Um, and then the seminar is in person. Um, so that's one hour a week on campus um, for each different module. So it's basically a 50-50 split. Um, and it means that we can do the lecture, make the notes at home, get all it all written down, pause and, you know, go back where it needs to be, um, have all the information. And then we go into the seminar for discussion um, where we're sat, you know, social distancing classrooms with masks on. But it's great because it means that we can discuss what we were taught in the lecture um, and have that conversation with our classmates and with the lecturer and ask any questions about anything we didn't understand. But I am also under the impression that um, from January, we're going to have the opportunity to have two hour sessions um, because my class size is a smaller one. We've been told that um, as long as nothing changes over the Christmas period, um, that we'll have the lecture and the seminar both in person following each other in two hour blocks. Brilliant. Thanks, Amelia. Um, Mike, over to you. Did you want to um, kind of add anything to that compared to your experience of learning and face to face compared to online? So it's also pretty similar to that. We have the four modules as well. 
it's a little bit different in that we actually have more time in the classroom than out of it. So for example, one module that we're going through is an anatomy based one. That is our practical module. That's the hands on one. That one is strictly in person and it's a three hour class one day a week. We've got another one that's actually split 50 50 down the middle. One week we're in for our three one hour sessions and then the next week everything is done online through pre recorded lectures and things along that line. The last two. One of them is entirely online re, uh, recorded lectures and the other one is entirely in person as well. It's another one of those that has a practical element as well as a lecture series and the seminar. So it's, it's still pretty even close to 50 50 split, but because we are more of a hands on course, we do actually have more time in a classroom hands on. Brilliant, thanks ever so much. So I've got another question here, which is, um, hello, how is, so this is Anna, how is work experience and placements being carried out due to COVID? Um, of, I suppose you guys being first years, you probably haven't quite yet got to any placement points or experience, uh, work experience points. But what I can say from our kind of our um, employability team um, and our careers team, we are working here at the university to, um, to make sure students get placements and stuff where, where possible. Um, those sorts of things are still happening. I can um, kind of vouch for us having had students come into our team on the campus. Um, we have had students who've, who've come in and worked um, for a day in, in, in a week with people like our, our press team. So where we can, we are still being able to to um, assign students those those work experience and those placements. There may very well be restrictions in place. There may very well mean that some of them are potentially shortened. But where we can, we are striving to provide students with that experience where we can. Um, Mike, is there any kind of talk on your course, do you know, of because I know that your course will begin to be um, placement based at some point in the future. Has there been any talk with to you guys about the um, work placement side of it? So we haven't talked too much about it. Unfortunately, we do know that our first placement won't be until I believe January 2022. So we've got quite a ways out. It's halfway through that second year. Hopefully by then things have gotten, like you said, to more of a normal kind of a state. If it's not, I'm sure we'll still find ways to do placements, especially since we're probably going to be doing those in more medical sessions, more medical kind of areas. So we'll be entering to the same kind of guidance that we are now with our practical sessions with all the appropriate PPE and everything along those lines. So they should go ahead as normal. We haven't quite heard yet what normal is going to look like. Amelia, did you want to add anything to that? Um, well, I can't speak from personal experience, but I can say actually that my flatmate, um, who is studying early childhood studies is actually going in January to um, like a preschool or a nursery to do a placement. So I can confirm that like they are going ahead. I'm sure she'll have to wear a mask and obviously adhere to COVID guidelines, but I know that she's been confirmed that she will be going there in January. Excellent, thanks so much. So I've got another question come in here, just wondering whether interviews for courses would be moved online or in person due to COVID. So um, generally our interviews for our courses have moved online. Um, there are um, current talks of how we still include some form of kind of in-person uh, experience as well. But I know as we moved into lockdown this year, um, a lot of our courses went online for interviews um, and they have to work really, really well. Students were doing Doing online auditions, online interviews, sharing videos, sharing portfolios, um, and it still worked extremely well. We still managed to 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 talk to students really well about their experiences um, and and about their applications. Um, and there will, where possible, like I say, be those elements where we can still um, include elements of um, yeah elements of face to face as well. And hopefully um, going forward and as things change and things are relaxed, we will also obviously relax the things that um, the, the, the kind of precautions we have in place too. I'm going to go back to some of my questions just for a couple of minutes, um, just in case, just, just before we, we just just to see if we get any other ones come in. But I'll, I'll just one that I think might be quite interesting for people is for you guys to share your thought process, particularly around the start of the course. So how did you feel when you were starting to think about moving to uni and those those initial days and those initial stages? Amelia, do you want to go first? Yeah, so um, I was mostly excited more than anything. Um, obviously, there was a lot of uncertainty. We weren't really sure what was going to happen, but we did have good communication um, from the university. I think like more than a month, maybe even two months before 
I started in September, um, there was like a, a statement released from the uni about the mix of um, what learning would look like for us. It wasn't specific to my course, but it was in general. Um, and then more things were released closer and closer to the time, um, which made me feel a lot more comfortable. And I had the opportunity to come down and view my accommodation before I moved in, just in the summer holidays. Um, I had like a one-on-one -on -one tour with my, with my parents. Um, and was told then some information about the um, about the accommodation, about how I wouldn't be allowed guest, etc. So I had a lot of information prior to joining, um, which did help to ease the anxiety. Obviously, 18, moving away from home, it was scary, um, but it was really exciting. And I think it was a really easy transition for me. Um, I moved into my flat. I really like my flat and I really like my flatmates. Um, and all of my lecturers made it really, um, really easy. Um, to just start getting work done. There wasn't too much pressure at the beginning, but they like slowly eased into like, this is how much work you should be doing. And this is what like what we expect from you, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, as much as obviously it was, it was um, scary, but it was still really, really great. And I wouldn't say that it felt more scary this year because of COVID than it probably would have done any other year, in my opinion. Thanks, Amelia. That's really cool. Thank you. Mike, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, just that I'm not living at the university. I'm in my own personal accommodation and I take the 30 minute commute in. I've been driving recently to avoid public transport. That's probably as scary as COVID has gotten in my local area is I'm not taking the trains and walking. I'm driving, but I will be carpooling with one other classmate who fortunately is in my bubble anyway. One of those two, three people that we have in the same group for those practical lessons. It, I would say that the communication from the university leading up to things was good if you're in a flexible position. I know that the mature group I was in, there was a lot more uncertainty because people were trying to figure out childcare, trying to figure out what to do with their jobs and everything. But it was also hard to get that information because the university didn't have anything that the government was giving out yet. So everyone just kind of wait for, you know, kind of the avalanche to hit, right? So everything can trickle down. And unfortunately, it just resulted in the university getting maybe a little bit of guidance out a bit later than parents, for example, would need to sort the childcare and everything. But honestly, I think the communication was still pretty spot on. We, we found out everything we needed in advance and we were able to make plans around that. So it wasn't as scary, I think, as it should have been, as it could have been coming into university as an older individual. And I don't think it's any more or less scary than it would have been any other year starting university for the very first year. Thanks, Mike. That's brilliant. Thank you. A couple more questions come in. So we've got, will there be more open days or chances to see the university before the new academic year? So um, I would love to say a, a definite yes. There are opportunities um, and we will be reintroducing our campus tours again for um, for this year. Um, and we're hoping next week that um, they, they're currently live on the website for bookings. And we're hoping that we come out of um, we come out of the, the the current lockdown in a normal way and that we're allowed to carry on with those. We will be restricting them as we have been. So there'll be five guests allowed to come at any one time from one household. And then the campus tour ambassador will be um, that sixth person. But yes, we will be welcoming people onto campus and hopefully um, we will be um, planning uh, not whether they will happen or not, we don't know, but we will be planning other um, activity and other campus based stuff that we hope to be able to implement quickly if things change next year. So if things change and you are making applications and we are able to, we are definitely um, willing and, and, and wanting to to invite people to campus. But we are able, like I say, to do those small campus tours, those more intimate kind of things as well. Um, when do you think interviews would be for Chichester? So um, that's dependent on course. Um, um, my best kind of advice for that is to direct you to our admissions team who um, can be contacted on admissions at chai.ac.uk. So they will be able to tell you um, different periods of time when interviews are taking place. The um, different subject areas plan them differently and do them at different points. But I know that some subject areas have already started and they will carry on um, well into the new year. So, um, yeah, that, that you'll, you'll hear about those very soon after you've applied. Um, if you're a parent, especially a young parent, what kind of support could the university provide? Um, so I, 
from speaking from a staff side of things, I know that our student support department um, have provided the most enormous package of support to lots and lots of different people. They've taken calls from parents, they've taken calls from um, family members, they've taken calls from the students themselves, and they are willing to jump on a video call. They are willing to um, meet with people in a socially distanced manner to um, allay any fears and to answer any of those questions that you may have. We really, really appreciate that um, students going off to university at 18 is a scary time, not just for the student, but also for the parents and for the family that are around them. This particular time obviously doesn't help that. That's that's something that obviously has added to those fears. But like I say, our student support team are willing to be there to support from the moment that you are thinking about that application right the way through to when you're a student and you're getting towards your graduation. Did either of you want to add anything? Did you have any experiences of using the support before you got to university this year? Amelia? Um, I didn't have any experiences personally, but I can say that I like I watched a lot of um, videos and I read a lot on the website about the support that was available so it sort of settled um, any doubts, fears, anxieties that I had um, and I think the general message that you get from anyone that's posting on social media that um, already goes to Chichester if you're like if you do what I do I like delved into all the different accounts that I could find of people that go here and are posting about their um, experiences that the general message was always just really positive and that really was reassuring to me and there's so many things on the website and the Instagram and the Facebook about the support available so um, just having a look on the social media basically gives you an idea about um, how supportive it can be to come here. Yeah definitely thank you. Um, Mike, I don't know whether there's anything you wanted to add just in terms of student support, if you've if you've kind of had any um, experience of that before you joined. I personally didn't use it, but one thing I will say is if you do commit to Chichester, one of the very first things that I noticed from the Facebook page that was set up was individual students actually going and creating different support networks of their own too. So there was a mature students group that immediately popped up and many of the concerns were shared amongst different parents were concerned or shared amongst you know all kinds of similar people same for the international group that i was part of and people were actually able to help out fellow students themselves even without the university necessarily providing that support so that's i think a very underrated help network right there is just your fellow students if you do end up deciding to come here Excellent, thank you. Um, you'll notice my colleague Steph has popped some details into the chat there as well for our student advice team. So you can call them um, and you can also email them. They are, they are, like I say, there to support students through that process, whether that's the initial stages of applying and deciding right the way through to, to being one of our students on campus. So um, yeah, please do use them. I'm going to go back to a couple of my pre-prepared questions just to um, just to see if we get any any more, but we, we've got a few more to go through and then I'll talk about one or two other places that we um, we would say to to visit to get some uh, get some other experience to Chichester. So, um, is there any particular advice from you guys that you might give to um, students looking to apply at this present moment? Mike, do you want to go first? Mm, that's that's a tricky one, isn't it? What kind put of you on the spot. <laughs> so, just take a look at your situation and really figure out what it is you want to do. If for instance, this COVID situation is really worrisome to you and you feel as though it might impede on your studies and impede in your daily life, then I think really just sit down and evaluate if you want to go ahead and get started in this upcoming year or if you want to, you know, prolong it for a year. It might also be worth looking in the news and figuring out the situations going on. I know that COVID is scary, but right now we've got a lot of really optimistic uh, vaccines that are being developed and I mean it's really quick these vaccines that have been developed so maybe we'll actually see more of that kind of normal sense of school life coming next year maybe we won't so I would just kind of stay informed keep checking the news keep up with people and then just one thing that's not really necessarily pertinent to join the university keep checking in with family and friends if you're worried about anything their chances are someone else is worried as well. Just check in with your family and friends. Get advice from family and friends and just figure out what it is that you want to do right now. Brilliant. Thanks, Mike. Amelia? Um, yeah, I'd say similarly, um, 
that's the general gist but also just like prioritize like think about what's important to you and what you're hoping to gain from coming to university um obviously it's different for everyone and you know speaking plainly if you are someone that wants to go to uni to like live the party lifestyle then like maybe hold off because it's not it's you can't really like you can obviously in the first few weeks that I was here before we went into second lockdown you could go to pubs and bars and stuff with you know six people social distance blah 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 um but you're definitely not getting that experience like the SU obviously couldn't hold any parties or anything like that so it wasn't the same experience that some people might think about when they think of what university is like it wasn't particularly bothersome to me but if that's something that's really important to you then just consider that um but yeah I'd say the main thing what I really did is just like think about my priorities and what I was hoping to gain from university and whether or not Covid would actually have any impact on that because personally I wouldn't say it has for my experience but obviously everyone's looking for different things. Excellent thanks Amelia and thanks Mike that's really good yeah. A um, couple more questions as I said so um, just to flip back a little bit to the teaching and assessment side of things um, can you give us an idea of how you've been assessed so far in the few months that you've been at uni? Amelia did you want to go first? Yes yeah, so um, at the moment it's all assignment based for me, um, essays um, we've had we had one midterm essay for one of my modules and that was due in just before reading week so um, in middle of October I think that was um, that was the first one and then we've currently got um, we're working on a lot basically for the end of term so for the rest of my modules we've got all essays due in either just before we break up for Christmas or the first week of January um, they're all about either 1,500 words or 2,500 word essays on different subjects um, but we've got a lot of guidance for them um, and we've obviously got the feedback that we got from the midterm that we did as well so um, I'm feeling quite positive um, and yeah just working on them at the moment basically. Brilliant thank you Mike same to you. So actually really similarly we've only had one assignment due so far that was going to count towards our grade and it was an essay as well just before reading week as well and we've gotten the feedback on that as well. So it's going to be one more essay I believe for that same course and then our other courses are all being evaluated relatively differently. One of them will have a group presentation due and we're actually doing that over teams very similar to this which is a great practice to get into because that's how you're going to be having meetings in the future as well. So just a little bit more kind of technology involved. We've got our practical course where it's still at the moment aiming to be done in person. It's um, one of those where you're going to be touching and feeling and poking on bones and muscles and identifying various things like that. And that is still scheduled right now to go ahead as normal. However, there is there are plans in place if we can't do that in person and it would be done same thing through teams and the lecturers would come up with some way of evaluating it and they already have a rough idea of how they're going to do that. Another one we've written a lab report and the final one I believe is actually a online timed exam. So it's not going to be your typical multiple choice one but what they're doing is giving about a two hour block where they'll give you the test and then you'll have to submit it before that deadline to actually go and make sure that it's done as close to professionally as you can possibly do it you know closed book so we'll see how it goes but there are still exams in place and it might be a little bit non-standard compared to what they had originally planned but the lectures have been really flexible at coming up with an alternative exam plan brilliant thank you i'm just going to share um i'm hoping to anyway share my slides again just for one last bit of um, the presentation. Um, might not even come up. No, it doesn't look like it's going to. Um, hopefully everyone can still hear me. Um, I'm just going to say before we finish for this one, there was just a couple of places I really wanted to highlight as being the final part to um, kind of final part to, to doing your research. Um, Amelia will probably share her own um, kind of bits and pieces in a minute, but I'd just like to say that um, a few of the places we would recommend you now to, to have a look at, particularly focused on Chichester. So you've got um, another kind of few of our webinars happening. We're going to be talking um, in a couple of weeks time um, or over a couple of weeks time rather. 
about our accommodation, about our students union. So there's two more different workshops um, and webinars that you can come along to to ask questions to, to really get uh, delve into Chichester again through those. We have a a whole host of vlogs and blogs, um, so lots of different people talking about their experiences, um, uh, COVID related, non COVID related. We've got blogs on there at the moment about mental health and how um, our big sports teams are looking at raising money for things like Movember. So there's a real flavour of Chichester and a real flavour of the community that's here. Um, we, as I said, are really excited to be relaunching our socially distanced campus tours. So you can visit those um, chai.ac.uk forward slash campus tours and that will um, that will take you to the page, give you some information and also enable you to book to come on campus. Um, and our, our virtual open day, whilst our last day for the virtual open day has passed, the website that you can go to for that is still live and that's openday.chai.ac.uk and that um, will give you um, more in-depth information about the courses the tutors talk about the courses there's some uh, kind of anecdotal stuff from um, lecturers there's conversations with lecturers pre-recorded um, and there's all sorts of other bits of information on there so please do take a look at those as well I'm gonna kind of hand over to Amelia before I finally wrap up just for her to talk about her kind of vlogs and blogs as well because she is currently uh, doing blogs and blogs <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm a student vlogger for the university, so I create content on my YouTube channel, um, which is called A Note to My Teenage Self. I'll just pop it in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, I share um, lots of things about my life at uni. I've shared tips and advice, um, uh, experience of, of being at uni with COVID. I've done a halls tour um, and lots of vlogs like Day in the Life, just so you can get a general feel of what it's like to be at university. So if you did want to check it out just from a more like relaxed and casual and like personal point of view then definitely check out my youtube channel for that excellent thanks amelia that kind of um finishes really with me but me kind of saying thank you ever so much for joining us this afternoon on this webinar it's been really nice to see so many people interested in finding out a little bit more about chichester if you do have any questions that you still want to ask then please do either go on the website and find the relevant contacts that are on there you can contact us via um, study here at chai.ac.uk or you can also email outreach at chai.ac.uk and those two um, those are two kind of team emails where people will will be able to respond to you or find out the answers and respond to you um, and, and we can also arrange lots of different things like um, like I said campus tours or video calls and bits and pieces as well so big thank you again for joining us today um, and um, stay safe.